As a church, we often remind each other of our mission to make disciples who make disciples across cultures in all of life. The funny thing is, discipleship and making disciples, although the centerpiece of what we do, is often a misunderstood term and a misunderstood reality. What is a disciple? What is discipleship? Where do I actually get to do that? And so oftentimes we come to be part of a church family with expectations of what that is. And so what I want to do in this video is help you understand what a disciple is, what is discipleship, and how does this play out and where are the environments we actually grow up as a disciple. And just a hint, it's not in a classroom. So, uh, simply stated, uh, a disciple has four components. A disciple worships Jesus, is changed by Jesus, obeys Jesus, and helps others do the same. So let me say that again. A disciple is one who worships Jesus, is changed by Jesus, obeys Jesus, and helps others do the same. So this has an upward, inward, and an outward reality. The upward is that we as disciples, we worship Jesus. To worship simply means to assign worth or value to something or someone. We were created in the image of God to give Him worth, to worship Him. There is not a single person on this earth who is not worshiping something or someone. A friend of mine thinks of it like a fire hose. It's always on, there's no off switch, and it just depends on what you're pointing it at at the time. As disciples of Jesus, our task is to assign Jesus worth, assign Him honor and value, and not other things. So we personally are learning to more and more worship Jesus. But there's also um, an inward reality. So upward is we are worshiping Jesus. Inward is we are being changed by Jesus. The, the gospel is the power of God for salvation. I encourage you to watch the video of the power of gospel, the gospel, to see how it is that we work this out. But it's believing in the life, death, resurrection, resurrection of Jesus, that it has power in our lives. And that power changes us. As the scriptures say, we go from one degree of glory to the next. We no longer have the same practices, the same habits, the same motives that we did before meeting Jesus, nor do we have the same ones that we did even a year ago. We're constantly and consistently growing in our faith. Now, consistently doesn't mean always up and to the right. It doesn't always mean that it's this, this general growth. There's dips and valleys and, and high moments and low moments, but the overall life of a disciple is one that's constantly being changed by Jesus. And then lastly, there's an outward reality. And this outward reality is that we obey Jesus. Jesus, uh, John says that if you love, and Jesus says this in John, if you love him, you will obey his commands. Part of learning to love Jesus as a disciple is to do what he says, to follow his commands. And this is the process of discipleship. So if a disciple is one who worships Jesus, is changed by Jesus, obeys Jesus, and help others do the same, discipleship is learning to submit to the empowering lordship of Jesus in all of life. That's the process. This is where we're going. It's not just who I am and what, who God has made me in my new identity, but it's this process of continually, gradually submitting myself more and more to the Lordship that empowers me, that strengthens me, that gives me the ability to obey. And it's His loving Lordship. I'm, I'm learning to walk in the ways of the God who loves me, who's extended me grace. So what are the environments in which we get to live out to th this reality? Where do we get to submit to it? Well, there's four that we say. And so first of them is life with God. Life with God. 
This is the foundation of what it means to be a disciple. This is where I am personally learning to, as John 15 says, abide in Jesus. We are to learn to live with Him, walk with Him. If we are to abound in life, we must more and more abide in Him. I mean, Jesus makes this amazing statement. Um, he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. And if we're really honest with ourselves, it's true. There may be some okay things, but the things that really bear fruit in our lives and in the lives of others, those are going to come as an overflow of our life with God. So this means regular practices, prayer, silence, solitude, fasting, Bible reading. These are all spiritual disciplines, means of grace that fuel us. So as a disciple, part of my life is to, as it, in my discipleship process, is to align myself with God Himself. But that's not the fullness. We are also needing life on life. God's way of restoring your life is through other people. For you to be exposed to your own brokenness where you are in need of repentance and faith is going to happen in relationship with other people. And so what is life on life? What does that look like? Look like it's a life that is lived up close so that it's visible and accessible to one another. And so that allows for you and others to gently peel back the layers and join each other in our growth towards the image of Jesus. This is where we can see how other people function as a member of the body of Christ and start to have a self-awareness. Oh, I don't do it that way. There's a, a difference here, but I play a really important role. It's when you are in a conversation with your spouse potentially and somebody else sees that lovingly pulls you aside and says hey that came across as a, a certain way that wasn't reflecting the love of Jesus what's going on there and they can not only expose but bring the gospel bring life bring gently bring you to a place where you are growing up in the faith so discipleship requires relationship I mean, think of Jesus and his disciples. They were close. There was a visibility. There was an accessibility. I mean, Jesus personified this in the incarnation, coming to earth, showing us what it means to be fully man. And he then takes his disciples, who were then going to do that with other people. That's the same as us. So it requires a life-on-life -life relationship. Discipleship also requires life in community. I mean, if you're going to look at the life of Jesus or subsequently the ministry of the Apostle Paul, you're going to come to the conclusion that it's very rare that there are one-on-one -on -one discipleship opportunities. One-on-one -on -one is typically not the best if you look at the scriptural practices of those that we follow. Often, if I'm discipling somebody only one-on-one, -on -one, they're going to end up looking more like me and less like Jesus. Now that doesn't mean I'm not reflecting Jesus, but I, in myself, only get to be a one part of that. And this is why community is important. I'm not the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. I am not enough to show anybody the fullness of Jesus, but the body of Christ is. And so we need to be in community, in relationship with not just one or a few others, but a community, a church family that loves Jesus, that reflects Jesus, that functions as the body of Christ. And in being with them, I not only get to know my part in this, but I also get to be part of something bigger than myself. And that's part of my discipleship. So life on life, life um, with God, life um, in community, and the last one is life on mission. Discipleship requires you and I to live on the mission of Jesus. Jesus did this himself with his disciples. He did not pull his 12 disciples aside 
put them in a classroom, teach them all of these doctrines, and then send them out. What he did instead is as he was going about doing the mission that he was called to, he brought his disciples along with him, showed them what it was like, took teachable moments, emphasized different aspects and elements, helped made sure they understand the gospel of God's kingdom. And as they followed him, they were learning what it means to be a disciple. Oftentimes in our context, we separate discipleship and mission. And what we would argue is, in order to be a disciple and on the pathway of discipleship, you need to be on the mission of Jesus. The mission of making disciples, to seeing the lost come to faith, other people grow up into maturity. Because remember, what is the fourth element of a disciple? It's not just somebody that worships Jesus or changed by Jesus or obeys Jesus. It helps somebody else do the same. As a disciple, as you are being changed, as you are obeying, as you are worshiping, your task is also to help other people do the same thing. You don't need to be a master. You don't need to be an expert. You, but you just need to be one step ahead of somebody else and bring them along with you. This is the life of discipleship. And this is what it means to make disciples who then make disciples. It's not just me being a disciple. It's not just me walking this out. It's me helping other people do the same. Now, as image bearers of a relational God, we're made by and for relationships. It's in everyday life that we get to experience being transformed by Jesus through these relationships where our sin is exposed, our, we are able to be uh, remedied with the gospel, where we can confess and repent and receive healing and transformation. This is the all of life. It's not a classroom where you only come and learn what's going to affect your brain. It's learning to affect your heart, your motives. It's learning to affect your actions and what you do. A disciple is one that's being changed, obeying and worship in all of life, in community, on the mission of Jesus.